Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 71 for Friday the 4th of March 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos from my house and that guy over there, that's Kent, along with a hey. couple of buddies. Hey man, how's it going? It's nice to see you in your house. That's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm in the, uh, the, the, the creation center of Ritual Misery. I'm here in my garage and it is, here I'll, I'll do a quick pan. It is as messy as it wants to be. Oh wow! Like, I think it's even messier than when I was there last. Yeah, time. there's, there's. Oh my god! I, not that I kept a clean garage, but since I've been gone, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> but we are not alone. We are not. We have Edgar and Adolfo from Lienzo. Hello. Hello, What's guys. Up, guys. Thanks for having us again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's awesome. Um, so we talked about this a little bit last week, but one year ago, almost exactly, I met Mr. Edgar Sorano at South by Southwest in Austin. Uh, he really got me excited about the game that they're developing, Mulaka. And that's what I, I brought these guys on to talk about. Um, we'll get to that here in just a few minutes. How, um, how's your guys' week been? busy fun busy? yeah <laughs> cool. yeah at this point of of uh the game development i'm sure every week is a busy week definitely yeah absolutely but very fun really i mean i yeah as we were talking before uh beginning the live stream it's it's been very fun very exciting it's a new venture for us and yeah my life couldn't be it hasn't been any any more exciting at, at this point yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, I honestly believe like we're in the calm before the storm thing. Like we're literally waiting for the shit to hit the fan. Yeah, and then yeah. we can have another podcast. And you ask us how right. we're doing because <laughs> right now it's like the second month of development. Right around where we're nearing like the final stages, we're gonna be like pulling our hair out. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. No so, doubt. Uh, no. So what you're saying is, one week from now, you're gonna come back on, and we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, but unfortunately, you guys aren't going to make it to South by this year, are you? No. Nope. Yeah, maybe no. next year. Hopefully next year, you guys will come to South by and have a new game to promote. That's the plan. That's the plan. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That'd be bitching. So, uh, so Kent, how's your week been, man? It's it's been kind of a crazy week all around. So, how's it been? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's been uh, well, pretty standard for me actually. Really busy at work. Um. Uh, yeah, and what we've been doing this week, you and me both, is getting ready for next week, South by Southwest. Yeah. Trying to coordinate things, get travel plans together, get meetup plans together, uh, coordinating with other people that we're not, that we know are going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's been a pretty jam packed week, and I am so excited that it's Friday and it's Ritual Misery Podcast time. Yeah. So <laughs> it's always um, a highlight. This uh this this could very well be our our last this I'm I'm, I'm not making any promises but this could be our last podcast never having done a live show. That is a very strong possibility. Yeah, cuz which is super if, exciting in itself. If we can get the pieces put together, we will be streaming our show live next weekend from South by Southwest. So that's that's that what we're aiming. Cool. Super awesome. excited. Um but yeah, uh, so as far as my week goes, man, I've been prepping the trailer, um, getting it ready to go because we'll be crashing that for the weekend when we're down there. Uh, a lot of stuff, getting stuff re- done around the house, getting ready for the big move this summer, hanging out with my daughter because she is just, she is all daddy's girl right now. And uh, awesome. oh, my dog died on Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday. Damn. Yeah, that's oh. uh, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's weird. My, my grandma's dog died yesterday. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, mother's dog, yeah. So Sam was about uh, not quite two years old, and it was not an expected thing, and he is uh, sorely missed. So um, on to happier stuff. So uh, so we have lots of stuff to talk about this week, actually. Um, Kent, you finished Breaking Bad. Like, what the hell, man? Finally, you finally finished Breaking oh, Bad. Oh, yes. Okay, so... <laughs> 
Have you got okay, Edgar and Adolfo? Have you seen Breaking Bad, the television I series? Mean, yeah, of course. Not me. Yeah. to be honest. Not you. Oh. Not me. You dude. need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, you I, need I to make that happen. This. Yeah, I've been told this I, many, many times over. It is so good, like, man. I I've been I started watching it probably I don't know six months ago, something like that. It was towards the end of the of the summer last year, and I've been fairly steadily you know watching an episode or two a week something like that and i got to the final season season five and it was a marathon it was i watched as many episodes as i could at a time until i was done those last three or four episodes are insane yeah how have you navigated the internet like line mine internet from spoilers all this time <laughs> okay so the, the only spoilers that i really got i guess were like memes and things like that from i don't know when did the show end like two or three years ago uh, yeah something like that so but i never i never really understood them uh now i knew i knew that walter white died because the uh press card because i live in new mexico only okay. like like three, three and a half hours away from Albuquerque, okay. which is where the show is set. Well, the the people of Albuquerque, well, the super fans that live in Albuquerque. The four people in Albuquerque. That, yeah, right. <laughs> now, Albuquerque is actually a, a fairly sizable city. Uh, they uh, staged a mock funeral for for Walter White and did a whole <laughs> thing. They had a memorial service, a grade side, uh, uh, graveside thing, the whole the whole thing. They they took an obituary out in the paper, uh, uh, the whole thing, and that was big news around here. And of course, I heard about it. Was it so I was knew it, ultimately he would not survive the series. Was it more of a uh, a, a funeral for Walter White or a funeral for the hopes of Albuquerque ever getting attention on TV again? <laughs> <laughs> Probably both, actually. <laughs> Like, oh, there's our 15 minutes. It's over. We got to do something now. <laughs> yeah, but and then I saw like uh, you know, a, a few years back, I saw the, the you know pizza on the roof memes and mm -hmm. things like that. But I, you know, no point of reference, and I didn't I didn't know what it was about. Um, so but I, really, you... that's not a spoiler. Like a pizza on the roof is not in yeah. any way, shape, or form a spoiler. So, so what did you show. think? What did you think of the of the the ending of the show? How how it ended and uh, where it ended? It to me, it was satisfying. Uh, a lot of people, I guess, have a problem with how neat of a package that it ended up with. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm I was happy with it. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched Dexter, but a lot a lot of people were pissed about that one because it was like a too convenient, not possible kind of ending to the show. Uh, a lot of people were pissed off about The Sopranos because it was a non-ending. Uh, <laughs> this one, I was I was really satisfied with the ending of this series. Yeah, I, it, it was really cool. I mean, it's really cool. And I mean, you can go down a really deep rabbit hole with that one with like conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I just feel sure. that uh, with a lot of shows, it's really hard to keep it that good for that long. Maybe that that's why they only have like 10 episodes of Game of Thrones per season. And they're like yeah. a year apart. <laughs> right. right, yeah. If you that with like a like a 20, 20 episode season, that's really hard to pull off. I mean, and like yeah. we are some like whiny bitches when it comes to our <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> yeah, really absolutely. yeah, we we absolutely are. Yeah. So I uh I actually thought that the way that Breaking Bad ended was yeah, it was a nice neat package. But that's the first time in the entire five and five plus years or whatever of that show that there was ever a nice neat package of anything. Like that show is just chaos all the way through. And yeah, for it to absolutely. end in a nice neat package is kind of a uh, all right, finally, <laughs> finally, something's something's yeah. working out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> so <clears throat> all right. Um dude, uh we have been planning our asses off for South by. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it, like we have nothing to show for it right now, but we've been planning our asses off. <laughs> yeah, I, well, okay, well, I mean, we will we'll, we'll announce some things at the end. No, it, none of it's going to be new information, but it's uh, maybe the first time everybody's heard it all in one place, right? Um, so we'll we'll do that rundown. We'll do that at the end of the show. Okay. 
Um, so what was your what was your geeky thing of the week, Amos? Um. Oh, okay. So here you go. Here's my geeky thing of the week. The trailer. Yeah, not so geeky, right? But we have a new truck. We have not tone towed this trailer with this truck. So Ooh. doing the weight and balance equivalent, you know, making sure that the weight distribution hitch and making sure the ride heights and everything else are all correct. I spent the last two days doing all that, making sure that we had a good mode of transportation and being safe and everything else. So that's a, it's not a lot of math, but it's a lot of numbers and a lot of, of wrenching around. So, you know, maybe, maybe some man geek stuff there, but yeah, right. That's definitely right. the geeky thing of the week for me. Cool. Edgar, what about you, man? Oh, it's been, I can actually show you guys. Look, um, it's been so re really awesome that now we have like salaries. Cause now I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it, <laughs> but I got this baby. Nice. And oh, finally, awesome. Finally, yeah. Finding a place to pull all my, all my stickers. And I was just telling, um, Adolfo today, I feel really weird that, um, uh, it's the fifth week of salaries we get paid every friday and that's a really hard thing to get like every friday getting money it means that you can spend almost all your money all up until wednesday because you think oh just another day and i'll get paid again so whatever so I, I i feel really weird that there's nothing on my amazon like account being sent to me right now because <laughs> for the last uh month and a half there's always been something pending um i of course have a budget but i've been no you really don't not <laughs> <doing that. laughs> yeah uh i i think it's just a hype i mean I'll, I'll get i'll get over with soon right now i have more than i can handle like time wise you know right so, right so yeah that, that's been it and oh something really cool um here in Chihuahua, I don't know if you guys know what the Mighty Mug is. The Mighty Mug? There's, yeah, Mighty Mug. Uh, mm -mm. It's this thing. I'm sorry for the plug, but it's like this this mug for like hot beverages, and it doesn't fall off if you push it or like bump into it. Because it, it has sort of, sort of, it's not a suction cup, but it's sort of a suction cup. And like you put it in, in a flat surface and it doesn't fall over. You have to like lift it up. And I saw it on, on Kickstarter like uh, two years ago. And then I told one of our uh, animators and he told me, oh, it's in Office Depot right now. You can go and get it. And I've been nice. waiting like for so long. And then I finally got it. And then I got here in my house and my mom's boyfriend was here and it was his birthday. And he saw me walking in with the box and he was sort of like, oh, shit, look what I got you, you know, <laughs> 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 to use it. But. I was really so now you got to go back and get another one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that was me. I don't know, Adolfo. <laughs> well, I mean, besides my job and me playing <laughs> The Witcher 3 every single night uh, <laughs> after work, I mean, I, I'm, I'm more financially intelligent than Edgar is. So I've been, uh, I've been <laughs> saving, saving all my money until this week. Until this week, I got uh, this like a weird, um, I don't know, um, moment of like a shopping spree, mm, like uh -huh. a sudden five minute shopping spree. And I spent like a lot on Amazon as well. <laughs> and I mean, I, I bought some uh, like games and, and stuff like that. But like in terms of geeky and uh, weird stuff, I and mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but I bought some amiibos, like Nintendo amiibos. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> the the Wooly, the Yoshi's, the the Yoshi's, uh, the Wooly amiibos, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I bought them, and 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 the moment I was buying them, I was thinking like, what am I doing this really? Like, what do I need them for? Like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Moment, moment of insanity. <laughs> yeah, but but like I was thinking about this, and at the same time, I was doing a checkout. And I didn't care. And now, and, and today, in fact, I got an email that they've been sent to me. And, <laughs> it's, it's so weird. But yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of geeky stuff, like basically my life is an entire dose of geekiness right now, really. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean. You, got, you guys, I'm um, sorry, you guys don't realize how awesome it is and dangerous. Because up until maybe a month ago or two months ago, we didn't have Amazon over here in Mexico. 
Oh, so I didn't we, realize that. Yeah, oh. we got Amazon on June, June or July last year. Oh wow! Amazon oh, in Mexico. Yeah. So and so Amazon. Wasn't, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. If you wanted to buy stuff, you had to like order it. I mean, you wanted to buy stuff online. You had to go like to specific store, you know, like maybe they sell right. T-shirts and you go to their store. Uh, and if you wanted to buy something on off eBay or Amazon, then you had to send it. Maybe a lot of stores didn't even sell if you you were living in Mexico right. or any other place that's not United States or Canada. But a lot of places like they do sell, but they charge like a lot of import, yeah, import fees. Yeah, that were crazy. oh yeah, I imagine. Yeah, and since we got Amazon Mexico, uh, the the all the prices for almost everything, especially gaming stuff in Amazon Mexico, are just so way way cheaper than every than any other store, any other option that we got in Mexico. And I'm talking like at least like fifty to eighty percent lower than uh, than any other store in the country. I don't I don't, I don't know how they they do this. Uh, and I thought I thought that it was only uh, something for the first or or a second week. Of, of the of the store opening in the country, but no, it's been it's still up right now, and it's still very cheap to buy stuff on Amazon. So, yeah, the, the moment that we got uh, money, especially Edgar, like he went crazy and spending <laughs> all of it and getting. I mean, we've got a uh, value out of it definitely through the Amazon in Mexico, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow, but especially cool. yeah for for geeky stuff and, and and this kind of things, it's 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 great really. So. so so, um, can you guys tell us just, I mean, talking about the game and talking about the, you know, development process and trying to find funding and things like that, um, you know, tell us some of the, some of the, like the, the biggest lessons you've learned along the way, as far as the whole process goes. Yeah. Like with, with Kickstarter and like the other, the other, uh, ways that you had to go about trying to raise money for the game. Um, it's been really crazy because, uh, I, I'm, I'm. As I'm sure most of you know, Kickstarter didn't work on the surface of it. Like we didn't get the money. What we did get was a lot of attention. A lot like, of marketing, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We got like national attention, like like national newspapers and like TV stations, and because TV is still big over here, and like like we have a we got a lot of attention. We got invited to like a lot of like international conferences and like big name things over here in Mexico because of the Kickstarter. A lot of people, I don't know why, they believed that we were already doing it. A lot of people ask us where they can play it uh, because they think it's already done. Uh, but for better or for worse, we got like a lot of eyes on us. And that's what started us on the road that eventually led us to being funded right now. And I mean, a lot of that. I mean, the Kickstarter page is still up. If you if you Google Mulaka, uh, you're gonna see it, and you can see that we're not funded, but you can see all the, like the like I don't know the game, and actually the game that we were talking about when we did the Kickstarter and the game that we're working on now are uh, it's really different. I mean, it's the same theme, it's the same story, but a lot of things changed because yeah, we I mean, learned. Yeah, the mechanics-wise, yeah, the game has evolved uh, in many ways. But in terms of its concept, in terms of, in terms of even its genre, it's it stayed basically the same. Like uh, when uh, a few months down the line, when we will eventually do uh, an unveiling of, of a, a first trailer or a demo or whatever, it, it would not be very much different from what you are really expecting at all. But because uh, we, we got to follow a, a line with a concept that, that we were uh, showing, right, uh, last, since last year. But uh, definitely, yeah, the game has evolved a lot. And I think uh, it has evolved in a very, very good uh, good sense, in a very good way. Because right now, uh, having, like, a budget and having, like, um, a deadline, right? Especially a deadline because we, we, we were, uh, the party was uh, invested. I mean, if people invested in the project, this, is, this means that we now have to be more focused on, like, and, and keep in line what we really want to do, mm -hmm. and and this this is helping a lot the project in a very good sense because we're making like in in a week or two we're making a lot more progress than we could achieve last year in two or three months to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how many people do you have on your team right now? Seven. Seven people. Seven people. Oh, yeah. uh, but we have two interns though. 
<laughs> oh, it's... interns are awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, God, I wish I wish Rachel Misery had an intern. <laughs> hey, hey, movie man Lucas. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, um, but we're basically uh, seven people and three musicians, but the musicians are, are working uh, on a... Uh, they're they're like a, on a freelance model. Is that how you call it? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but on the studio, like physically on the studio, with uh, like sitting down and working on the project, uh, we, there, we are only seven people right now. Mm. And I think uh, that the only the only seven people in this almost a million uh, population city, that only seven people are actually making a game and getting paid for it. And that's us. And that's I mean, uh, every time I think of it, and I, I realize that. Man, it's kind of overwhelming to be perfectly honest with you, but it's also very, uh, very. It's very motivating for me. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah, that's that's really cool. That's it's a cool position to be mm -hmm. in, and you actually uh, in the uh, pre-show you were talking a little bit about it that it's it's scary yet exciting at the, at yeah, the same it, time and. I believe it grounded us. Like now having the, the funding, we now have to really dedicate like nine hours. We now have to, you know, as Adolfo was saying, we have a time window and we have to like really deliver everything in, like within a schedule and we have to everything to be planned out and yep. uh, we have to like look for the best way to make a game really on the industry not just like mesh mashing things together. Uh, it's been really awesome. It's been really awesome as a learning process. Uh, uh, one of the programmers told me, like, we might as well, we might have had like a, like a master's degree, you know, all these three years. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure there's not a school in the world that can teach me all the things I've learned. Oh, and absolutely. I'm to, not only like, gaming wise as, as a designer but also like business wise and all that stuff like i couldn't have learned that from any other way other than this like right, just right. stomping against doors and and people telling me no and all of that stuff you know yeah well like i mentioned i i met you at south by southwest last year edgar and yeah. you were an amazing ambassador for the game uh, you got me excited about it, and the thing, the thing that really fascinated me was the type of game that it is. It's something that I have never heard of before, and I think the audience would love to hear what is Mulaka. Okay, uh, so Mulaka, uh, it's basically a game about the Raramuri tribe, the Raramuri tribe or the Taromara tribe. It's an indigenous people tribe who still lives in Chihuahua. I mean, you can, if you step out the street, you see them over here all the time, all the way. They they come from the Chihuahua Sierra or the Taromara Sierra, which is like the biggest tourist spot in Northern Mexico. Uh, we have the Copper Canyon or Barrancas del Cobre. And we have the, like the Pasasiachi Waterfall. And they're world renowned for their running ability. They're, they're like uh, long distance runners. And actually the first time I heard about this was in a book made by an American called uh, Born to Run. Mm -hmm. I, I'm slipping on the author's name. But anyway, I wanted to, because I'm a scout. So I've, I've, I've known a little bit more about their culture than the average people. The average... Uh, guy from the city who watches them just thinks of them as vagrants or like people who don't have jobs and they just want to live off the government or whatever. And it's, it's really not at all that simple. Um, for first, for starters, they don't have a concept like in their culture, they can't understand the, the term of possessing something. So mm -hmm. they can't mm -hmm. own like property or money or whatever. Uh, you 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 hear you hear a lot of of times when they approach you, you they tell you they say korima. Korima means share, like to share, and people mm. misre misrepresent that as like give me money, you know. But the, the, uh. the korima, which actually is a mechanic in our game, uh, it's like 
karma. It's like sharing stuff. But I'm, 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 I'm getting off the tracks here. What I wanted to do with this game was to tell people how awesome this culture is, which they don't have no idea about. I've said this a thousand times and I'll keep saying it, but the same thing happened with ninjas and samurais and like Apaches and like these awesome cultures that get you really excited. Like if you hear ninja, you automatically think of like cool stuff. If you hear pirates, you you think of cool stuff, you know, if you hear like samurais or Spartans. And that has happened because Hollywood or just media creators have yeah, used culture. them to mm. make stuff. And nobody has used the Mexican cultures to make stuff other than Mel Gibson and like chopping off babies' heads and stuff, you know? <laughs> and I I firmly believe Actually, I gave a te- I gave a TED talk uh, about half a year ago about this. I actually believe that we can exploit, in the best sense of the word, we can exploit all these cultures, and at the same time that we are creating new and awesome, cool stuff to explore, we can like help preserve them, mm-hmm. and that's the pipe dream I have about Mulaga. Yeah, and you told me a a more condensed version of this last year in Austin, and that's what that's what got me excited though. You, yeah. your enthusiasm was infectious, and I I was like, oh my gosh, tell me more, tell me more, and that's when you started. <laughs> like, here, here's my business card. <laughs> Just look it up. <laughs> but we were we were fortunate enough to keep in in contact with each other, and we've been talking off and on throughout the year, and finally I got you on the show. <laughs> um, but no, that's that's awesome. What what kind of game actually is it? Is it an RPG? Is it an adventure game? Is it a puzzle solving game? What what is the game actually like? So it's it's basically an adventure game with some RPG elements, a little bit of platforming here. But if I mean if I have to really put it in a genre, I would say it's shaping up to be more an, an action adventure game, like a third person action adventure game. Yeah, with some platforming, some RPG stuff here and there. A lot of inspiration from games like, for instance, like The Witcher and stuff like that. But, I mean, of course, in a smaller scale because it's an indie title, uh, right? But, yeah, it's it's definitely an action-adventure game that uh, its main focus is at learning uh, learning about these, uh, these amazing uh, people through the, uh, through the exploring it and seeing these uh, this beautiful sites of the Sierra and the, and all the, the locations that we are trying to recreate to, to make, to, to put into the game. And through combat, absolutely. Nice, yeah. yeah that... there's... Sorry, there's a lot of questions that I'm not allowed to answer. I'm, I'm <laughs> doing air quotes here. Because sure, I'm sure. like, I get carried away really fast and really <laughs> hard. And we have uh, the, our lead programmer, whose name is also Adolfo, uh, and, and we use this as an inside joke a lot. I make the design of the game and then before I even tell the team, I have to first talk to him so he can ground me and tell me, no, this imp- this is impossible. We only have seven people, <laughs> not 700 people. Just <laughs> of- no, we cannot use VR yet. No, we cannot use like programs and stuff like that. You know? Right. So there's <laughs> stuff that I've learned that it's best if I let other people talk because then people are going to believe that we are actually making this triple A awesomely huge project which is my <laughs> dream but it's actually not like that no so now the 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 culture that's featured in the game it's the raramuri what 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 are they called yeah it's it's raramuri or tarahumara ah. okay uh, right Rara, yeah sorry yeah. raramuri is, is their real name and then tarahumara is a name that the conquistadors and the people the jesuits who who came here gave them or named them okay so you can okay. find them either, either way now do you have future plans um or a dream i guess at this point or a um a goal to after this game is successful do you want to feature other, so. other cultures in in future games yeah yep awesome. yeah actually part of the deal uh, or, or the reason why we got funded was actually this long-term vision. Um, it was kind of strange because we got partly funded by a federal program, which is in charge of preserving exactly this, like cultures, but nationwide. 
and then for them in order for them to give us that partial fund they had to believe that we were going to get the rest of the money from another guy and this other guy had to believe that the government thing was going to support us <laughs> so how we convinced the government guys were that it's actually i, I could tell you all about it it's a fund called uh yoreme and it's mainly three states. So it's Chihuahua, which is the biggest one and the one we live in. Sonora, which is just uh, southwest. No, uh, no to, to the us. west, to the west of Chihuahua. Okay, just west, and then I mean, Sinaloa, and to, to the, which to the is... South of, uh, to the south of Arizona. To the south of the state yeah. of Arizona. Okay. So they all, they all share this fund, and the, the, the way that we hooked them was that, you know, this year we're going to do Mulaca, Next year, we're going to do another one for another state. And then the year after that, for the third state. And what's actually really cool is that all of these states share the same tribes and actually uh, made a lot of contact with the Apaches from like Arizona, New Mexico, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So again, the dream is to be able to like encompass all of these cultures, you know, in those wow. games. We still don't know what type of game is going to be. We still don't know if it's going to come right after Mulaka. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we don't know, but the plan mm -hmm. is to uh, eventually make at least three games like these. Right. Awesome. Right? Awesome. Yeah. So Movie Man Lucas in the in the chat is wondering, uh, well, his, his question was, what time period does this game take place? It, but I will add on to that. Is is it, in fact, a, like a depicting historical events or or what? What, what what is it actually depicting and when oh that's awesome because yeah oh wait wait this game the period the time period it's way before the jesuits got got here because once the jesuits got here uh there was a lot of mixture of cultures so a lot of like myths and legends get uh intertwined with the ones from europe and stuff like that sure sure and then this happens with all the tribes. I mean, all of them. And then you don't get like the pure thing, you know? And then you get a lot of like crosses and like Jesus things and stuff, which even now, if you talk to a lot of Raramuris now, they believe that's their story, but actually no. And right. we get a lot of help. And I would love to plug this in uh, of uh, Enrique Servin. We tweeted, I, th I believe we tweeted and Facebooked his book? Uh, today yeah today yeah today that was today we, we put up a picture oh, okay of yeah him. yeah i saw that yeah mm -hmm. uh, his book just won the international myth and legend prize something thingy important big. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, i, I love remember. how you're so well title right there about the, about i mean it is a big deal it is a big deal but i don't remember the name but anyway um we we connected we clicked so good and so well with him because he is like he's not a gamer but he's the most uh the nearest person we found to a gamer that actually is an expert on all this culture yeah i mean he's a cultural genius but like it's mind-blowing like how much he knows about this stuff mm -hmm. and he's been very supportive he of our like project seven languages. <laughs> yeah he speaks like seven languages and but i mean aside from that the time period is actually the sixth version of the world, which is like 200 years before the discovery of America, more okay. or less. And uh, we're sticking to historical facts, yes, as much as we can. But there's a lot of leeway, a lot of leeway, because um, just in La Sierra, there's five different dialects that are currently spoken and they actually kind of break down into five different like cultures within Raramuri culture and they have like different versions of stuff that happen wow. so no one really knows exactly but one can tell like okay these things are similar so that works a lot in our in, in our advantage and I really hope that it keeps doing so for the next games because we can just say okay what works best for a game is this version and what works best for this game or this part of the game is this other version and mm, no one mm. can tell us that that's not true because nobody really knows and <laughs> right, right. another thing that's awesome yeah. with that is that there's 
no um, visual depiction of a lot of stuff. So we know there were giants uh, in the Sierra. That's all we know. We don't know the color of the giants or the physical appearance of the giants or how they moved or whatever. So we get to create that, you know? And mm -hmm. we're not really telling lies because nobody knows. So so that's really fun. I right. hope that so, answers the question. Are you, yeah, and, and to build on that, are you also adding in uh, like some of the mythological uh, aspects? Like, you know, uh, well, you mentioned giants. Did, when, when you're talking about giants, are you talking about... Um, like actual like large people that actually existed, or is this a mythological like a like, like a monster a, like a type tit thing? A, a titan's equivalent from the Greek mythology. Uh, yeah, that that's really interesting. They're called um, in in Raramuri culture. They're called ganokos oh. or gano, and they are. Some people tell us that they're stone giants. Some people tell us that they're actual actually like trees, like the ants of or the rings. And some people say that they helped the Raramuris, some people, and like they helped them uh, uh, reap their, their like corn and stuff. And then they got their payment by eating their children. And oh, some people say oh, wow. that, yeah. <laughs> some people say that they, uh, they often uh, entertain themselves by throwing rocks uh, great distances and then crushing like, villages and stuff like that so uh their role in the ramuri tribe it's really impartial from like good and evil you know they're just like forces of nature and if they if you found them on their good side then they're good if you found them on their bad side then they're bad mm. in terms of the game i most likely can maybe tell you they're gonna be like monsters enemies type of deal and and yeah so yeah they're they're, they're mythological yeah, so okay. summarizing uh, giants and, as in monsters and not people, definitely. Have you guys played, uh, for instance, maybe this is a, I think this is a good comparison in terms of, of their design. Have you played the, the original Metroid Prime game? Metroid Prime, yeah. Yeah, uh, you remember the, uh, there was a boss fight in Fendran Adrift, I think that was the, the snowy area. Mm -hmm. Like a rock monster that called Tardos, like a big one. Right. Yeah, that's... That's basically like a very similar thing to that. Okay, awesome. Very, very similar to that. Hmm. I dig it. I dig it. The, cool. the more I hear about this game, the more I want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, can you give us an idea of a timeline of when uh, you were mentioning trailers, um, a, a demo, like a playable demo, um, release times, maybe? Uh, what, what sort of a timeline can you reveal to us? Okay, so uh, about the trailer, I think we should be, uh, you will be able to see a full-fledged uh, trailer uh, later by the end of the summer or, or maybe uh, during the beginning of fall, of fall this year. Okay. I'm, guessing, I'm guessing by uh, uh, something like August, September, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing towards to, like a, a small trailer, just a small, a new, something to show, to show up, but we will be unveiling uh, stuff in forms of uh, pictures and small uh, small video clips uh, during the during the, the upcoming months, um, and uh, the the game you should be able to play it, uh, next year during the first half of next year. Of okay, so maybe you will bring a, a playable demo to South by next year. Yeah, yeah, that awesome. that that's that's definitely definitely a possibility. Actually, we're we're thinking of uh, bringing a playable demo of the game before uh, during this year, but uh, I cannot um, disclose uh, much information about that because, especially because we we haven't confirmed anything. But yeah, I, it's, we're planning to attend uh, a few events here and there during the the, the later half of 2016. So as soon as we have uh, something on that, we, we should be letting you know. Awesome. Yeah. And Very well, cool. how can people find out about this? Like if they're like, oh, my God, this game sounds awesome. I want to know more about it. How can I stay updated? So uh, we, we got a lot of um, uh, so social media sites. We're on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Lienzo Mexico. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Lienzo MX. We're on Tumblr at Lienzo MX .com. We're on YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com slash Lienzo official. 
Am I missing anyone? No, I were on Twitch as well, but uh, to be honest, I don't remember the, the, the <laughs> user, our username on Twitch because it's, it's a brand new thing. And we also got a, a mailing list. If you want to be a part of our mailing list, you can uh, send an email right away to hola, it's hello in Spanish, hola at lienso.mx, and we can add you to our, to our mailing list at, at any time. Or if you prefer, I mean, we are on almost every social media known to mankind right now. So Right. So <laughs> can I just go to lienzo.mx and find links to these things? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I really <laughs> like the website. Did, did your team design the website or did you have someone else make that for you? Oh, us, uh, we, we did. I mean, not, not Edgar and I, but yeah, someone, uh, some of our, uh, co-workers on the team they uh, made the website well it, it is to me and, and this is, it hasn't changed much over the last year as far as no. design uh, but even a, a year ago i was looking at this site and i was like this is a beautiful site it's one of the most i don't want to say innovative innovative but it's one of the more uh i guess unique looking sites that i've ever seen i, I really dig oh. the layout of it it's really cool Thank you. yeah, yeah they, they took it as a person the guys took it as a personal challenge because I was talking about like uh, uh, outsourcing the work to somebody else, yeah. and they told because they always badger people who are artists but only do websites because right. they're like, oh, pfft, that's the lowest <laughs> of food chain, you know. And I told them, well, I'm gonna have to hire somebody, and they're like, no, don't you dare! I'll do the best website, whatever, blah, blah blah. And yeah, they went ahead and and did it out of like spite, I think. Which was that, a good that thing was to that was Adolfo, right? The other Adolfo on the team. Yeah, yeah that was him. Yeah, it, 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 that totally sounds like him. Definitely. But because yeah, I mean, he, thanks a lot for the he, compliment. I should be letting him know tomorrow about this. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he had a corporate, like, real corporate job before this, and we got a lot of offers. Not a lot of offers, but we often get like people calling us. Oh, can you can you do my website or can you do my? Uh, can you manage my Facebook thing and stuff? And he gets really mad. <laughs> no, we're designers, we're not going to scoop that low and blah, blah, blah. Uh, he's like, he has a real problem with getting paid, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to hate getting paid, right? I mean, it's, 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 it's just more to do with the fact that, well, he's very busy, especially now with the project, right? Yep. And especially because we got uh, two projects uh, on top of us. It's Mulak and uh, we have another game coming out on uh, this summer called Hunter Legacy, a 2D action platformer coming to Steam. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're busy with that one as well. Uh, that game right now is, uh, is on a debugging phase. We're uh, just polishing the game for some more testing and then later for release. So yeah, I don't think it's the fact that he doesn't want to get paid, but the <laughs> fact that, that man, like he wants to have time to, for at least some eating and living, basically. Right, and spending the money that he's making. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So what else do you have? Do you have any, any like, um, last words of, uh, you know, anything to, to get us excited about Mulaka or any of the other projects that Lienzo is a part of? Oh, definitely. Please check out um, Hunter's Legacy on Steam. Uh, it's been already greenlit. And we're going to release, uh, like uh, Adolfo was saying, we're going to release it in the summer. But you can just get on it and, like, subscribe to the mailing list. We'll let you know when you can buy it. And, and maybe we'll, even... we'll be releasing a free demo of the game before before it's released so you can try it out. Awesome. And we're going to, well, we're still thinking this through. But we want to do uh, some things with Twitch, like stream our maybe some meetings or stuff like that. So you can actually see the process and uh, really uh, find out that we don't actually have idea what we're doing. But uh, in the meantime, maybe like us a little bit more and, and maybe get the I, game when it goes out. I got to tell you, not knowing what the hell's going on when you're in the middle of something is that's exactly what me and Kent are, are experts at. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're 71 episodes in to, to not, not know what, what the hell we're doing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing I found out uh, because when when I was like a kid, I'm like, oh yeah, when I'm a grown up, I'll figure I figure I'll figure everything out. And then you're a grown up and you realize that nobody really knows, but you tell somebody, 
I know what's going on. The yeah, of course. I was just asking you if you know, and that's <laughs> the deal with yeah. everyone. Everything. Absolutely, that is so yeah. true. I remember uh, what, during one of the first weeks uh, of, of this year uh, working on the project. I remember just one day, one and uh, one afternoon on, on the on the office. I approached Edgar, in fact, and. Uh, like, like like speaking like slowly like uh, I, I didn't want anyone to to hear me and and i told him like hey man hey dude like for real like don't lie like do you really know what the fuck we're doing and he was just on his computer like i don't know like looking at amazon or facebook i don't remember what what, what yeah. he was doing hard work <laughs> yeah hard work and, and he and he turns to me like with like of course not, man. Like, of course not. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's it's been a lot of uh, of learning and learning stuff, and and yeah, I mean, you realize that you really don't know shit, <laughs> like absolutely nothing, and and it's been a lot of learning. I, I think I'm kind of by this point getting the grip out of it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, that's one of the beautiful things. You try something new, and you don't yeah. know what the hell you're doing, but but yeah. you just absorb everything. You just learn as much as you can, and eventually you realize one day like oh shit i did that and yeah i was actually kind of good at it oh man let's do it again yeah yeah you, you, usually you realize that as soon as you're not doing it anymore like yeah exactly <laughs> then you move on to something else you <laughs> suck at it and then you have to learn something else <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Awesome, what, guys. I, oh go, go ahead edgar oh i'm sorry i was just gonna i was just gonna add that what i'm certain that you do need is kind of a compass of sorts like we have one objective, which is to ultimately make a game about Raramuri. How we're mm -hmm. going to do it, I have no clue. But once we do it, then we're going to say, oh, yeah, we knew all the time what we were doing, of course. Yeah, yeah. Why. yeah. absolutely. Well, uh, and, I, and one last thing I, I'd like to add before uh, before jumping over to another topic or, or, or whatever you guys have planned. Like, uh, uh, so, sort of uh, going to your point of what can we tell people to get excited about the game, definitely... Uh, I just I, I want to um, uh, put on the spotlight the team's passion for this definitely because everybody at the Lienzo right now I mean we can all jump uh, yeah yeah I mean we're getting paid but we can definitely jump to another boat and get a better pay uh, better maybe even, maybe even some uh, better conditions in terms of the amount of work and stuff but we are not doing this because we're not doing that I mean because we want to make this like we really want to make Mulaka we really want to get Hunter's legacy out. We, we feel proud of these projects, and I don't think, um, I don't think we've ever. I mean, personally for me, I've I've never done something that I've been more proud of. I think so than this, and it's been just a few weeks into production, into a real production of Mulaka, and yeah, the, the whole team is making my job very easy in in a sense because the because everybody wants to make this, so I I'm not like having to to put pressure on anyone because everybody just does, does this naturally, right? And I think, I, I'm a firm believer that when you do something out of love, out of passion, it, there's no way it can, uh, it can go awfully wrong, right? And I, I, think, I think that we can uh, definitely see this on the final products. And, and speaking as unbiased as I can, I, I the, what I played, for instance, of Hunter's Legacy, which is, uh, which is an, a, on a better stage right now, it's it's rather good. It's it's very, it's a very good game, and I'm and I'm, and I'm the kind of person that likes to destroy video games because I love them so much. But I, also I kind of like break them apart because uh, I'm very I'm very like um, demanding out of them. And really, man, I can see the passion that these guys are putting into the into you know, the the programming team and the the art team that they're putting into the project. And I think that just by going by that, there's a reason to be excited for both of these titles and whatever we are making into the future both in the in the hundred legacy line or the origin tribes uh, line for other indigenous tribes uh, video games yeah that that is awesome i mean you you hit the nail on the head when you said that uh love and passion uh you know really contributes to it that that is that is the key if if you have a team full of passionate people i mean how how can you fail? It's it's Absolutely. it's going to be a success. So I, I wish you guys the very very best of luck, on uh, on this and and all of your your projects because 
I'm excited about. I've been excited for a year about it, and I'm still excited about it. Um, so you guys are absolutely welcome to come back on the show anytime that that you want to promote or uh, update or uh, yeah, any anything. If you if you got something new to announce, I, I would love to have the the scoop on Ritual Misery. <laughs> Be the first to tell the world about cool. about something new. Um, so yeah, Let's but you guys happen. are welcome. Yeah. You guys are welcome back anytime. Thank you, right. so much. Thank you so much. It, so it means much. a lot. It, it's it's an honor. And really, uh, looking at the support from guys like you and from the community, like at the least every uh, every every day or so, we do get an email, a random email from a random guy that wants to help us or just tell us that yeah, he or she supports us and, and that we are. Um, I remember last week we got a, a, a an email from a guy. I, sorry, I don't remember his name, but he was he he basically told us that we are an inspiration for an entire. Uh, community of gamers in the country that being told that making games is impossible in, in this place. So, and, and, and guys like you that are uh, that are having us on on their shows, on their websites, on their uh, want, wanting to spread the word about our uh, the stuff that we are doing. This is man, this is mind blowing. And I really can. Uh, uh, the only thing I can do at the moment is just thank you and uh, yeah. And we will. I promise that we will make it worth your while. And make awesome. the best, the best uh, game that we can. Tell you what, man, play. I I really wish we got some of those emails saying, uh, you know, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you you will, you will eventually. A little, little bit of fan support, <laughs> man. That'd yeah. be amazing. So uh, you will eventually so sp- speaking of of high passion and still not knowing what the fuck you're doing, we got some <laughs> shit lined up this coming weekend, dude. What's going on, man? Give us a scoop. Oh my gosh. Okay, so South by Southwest, or as. Um, as our tour de force, I guess, uh, comes with the Diamond Club. The reason we're going to Austin for South by Southwest is South by So Wasted, uh, which is pretty much <laughs> the the Diamond Club event of the year. Yeah. Uh, there's there's several things. You know, there's there's things at Dragon Con and there's things at Nerdtacular. Not this year, but um, that's just because Nerdtacular is not happening. Uh, but Throughout the year, there's a couple of, of Diamond Club events, uh, but South by in Austin is that's the one. If you're gonna go to one, this is the one. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on. Uh, the first one, the first major event that's been announced so far is actually gonna be before you and I get there, and that kind of sucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, but it's it's uh, Justin Robert Young, as everyone in Diamond Club knows, came out with a card game called The Contender. Hell of, hell of a fun card game. Uh, he is doing a card caucus for the contender, and it's basically this particular project that he's doing, or um, I guess event. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, it's a 50-state card caucus. He wants to have a public game in all 50 states, and the Texas one is happening in Austin on Wednesday. The 9th of March, and it starts at 6 o'clock. I'm not sure how long it's going to go. It probably just goes until it's done. Uh, but that's going to be at the Hideout Coffee House, uh, 617 Congress Avenue. Now, I just found out something interesting yesterday. I fly in on Friday, mm-hmm. and you drive in on Friday. A couple hours later, yes. Yeah, and I, I learned that somebody else is arriving the same day as us. Well, you, you know, th- here's the thing: at South by Southwest, there's not nearly enough traffic. There oh, are oh. There, there there are plenty of ways to get to anywhere you want, and <laughs> there's never any problems with transportation in any way, shape, or form. So, okay, lie. Okay, everything Amos just said is a lie. Um, Austin is a, is a very traffic con- congested city. Put a in, a festival a lot a gigantic international festival in right in the middle city. of it right yeah right and dab in the middle of downtown right in the middle of it and you, that you're just going to congest the hell out of an already and congested I've system i heard that uh, the obamas are going to be at the, at the at the show right that's exactly what i was getting at oh. was that you take all, all of that congestion for austin and then put south by in it add that congestion and now you got Let's blockades. The president of service. the United States <laughs> <laughs> in that mess. Yeah. We're going to be closing streets and blocking traffic and redirecting this and that. Wow. 
Um, I just uh, hope I get there early enough. I'm glad I'm. Feature closed. I'm glad I'm not an Uber driver. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, but at least if you're if you're an Uber driver, at least you're getting paid. Mm. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's so, gonna be Friday. Yeah. <laughs> also, also on Friday, we are having an unofficial Diamond Club meetup at Darwin's Pub on Sixth Street, two two three East Sixth Street. Um, that's it from five to seven. Just yeah, five. Well, more likely five to whenever. Right. The right. This time is five to seven. Um, we've been referring to it as the unofficial Diamond Club meetup, but it's about this close to being the official Diamond Club meetup. On yeah, Friday. but it's it's kind of like the uh, the Diamond Club pre party is really what it is. If you're just coming in for the weekend, that's uh that's where we're gonna get together and plan the rest of our weekend and see what kind of parties and everything else we all want to go to and and all that stuff. So, and uh, with any luck, I don't want to say luck with uh with with proper support, we'll probably be broadcasting that uh, live on diamondclub.tv as our weekly episode. Yeah, uh, more to come on that. We're, we're still working out the logistics of, of all of that, but that is, a, that is absolutely a possibility. And there's a couple more things, but the big show, the big thing for Diamond Club for going to South by Southwest and uh, the official South by So Wasted will be... <laughs> I just love that so much. It's how I started watching. It's super awesome. Yeah. So, Austin, uh, Austin, so, uh, Night Attack yeah. Live. Yeah, which which the acronym that that we're using just to make it because Austin Night Attack Live. That's a whole lot to say. So we just we just break it down into uh, the the letters A A N A L will be happening on Saturday. <laughs> We're, and that's gonna be that's gonna be from five, uh, that's gonna be from two to five at the Brew Exchange on Saturday. Yeah, at the Brew Exchange. I, man, have you looked up the website for the Brew Exchange? I have. What a cool place, dude! Yes, yes. It's, it's basically set up like the stock exchange, mm-hmm. but it's beer, <laughs> and the prices actually fluctuate. So the more a beer is bought, and the, and this only applies to craft beer. So you can buy like Bud Light all you want. It's still only like three dollars. <laughs> But a craft beer, the more of them that are purchased, the higher the price goes. Oh, I didn't see but that. It, That's awesome. But, it, but at the same time, the beers that haven't been purchased recently, the price goes down. Wow. So and they, have a, they have a live ticker going around. So, so what we need is we need a whole bunch of people ordering IPAs so so that so that all my stouts start dropping in price that's exactly. that's what i mean we get in the ipa mood we just have a bunch of people order a bunch of stouts and the ipas well actually it, it, the, the way it works though is that it's by category so the ipas have their own like exchange so the the most purchased ipa mm. goes up in price and the least purchased ipa goes down in price oh and then so the stouts and the same with everything else so your shitty ipas aren't going to affect my stouts at all got it <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> such an inspired idea to mix mass yeah. alcohol consumption with finance and math that's so <laughs> awesome they, they are such a perfect pairing that's a super awesome concept really <laughs> Wow, so um here. let's let's make that here <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so saturday saturday that a n a l austin night attack live obviously that's the main event that's brian and justin's flagship diamond club show night attack and it's going to be happening for the first time ever live at south by southwest um it's, it's going to be a, a a huge awesome fun event they have a lot of stuff planned it's going to be possum posse is going to be there oh Yes, and surprise guests that haven't been announced yet. Right. Um, certain people, we, I mean, you can expect the people that are at all the live shows. You can expect Tom Merritt. You can expect Veronica Belmont. Oh, no, uh, Veronica Belmont is a no-go. I've already confirmed. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. She's at every live show. Uh, yeah. That she's, sucks. Yeah I, that's, yeah, I confirmed with her in chat uh, about a week ago. Oh, man. Okay, well, it sucks, Veronica, that you're not going to be there, but... There's gonna uh, there's gonna be so many Diamond Club celebrities, um, chat roamers. It's it's gonna be such a fun time. Yep. Um. So yeah, I can't wait for that. So we roll from from the A N A L, uh, <laughs> right into Taze Taco. Yeah, yeah. You go from 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 uh, 
from a little little anal to 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 a big taco. Um, wait, is that supposed to be the other way around? I'm not sure it happened. <laughs> Those somebody, might, <laughs> somebody might misinterpret the. Uh... <laughs> so on, so on Sunday, um, Diamond Club's own Tay Allen. We'll be we'll be hosting a a well I don't know about hosting but uh... sponsoring well maybe not sponsoring either um, welcoming us at, to the event. There you go. There it's, you go. It's brunch event. That's gonna be taking place at the Kung Fu Saloon from, on from Rio eleven Grande. from eleven to one, yeah, on Sunday, so, and it's basically the like I guess the final uh, Diamond Club meetup of the weekend, right? So yeah, that's gonna be going on. Um, there is, an, oh man, I put I put all this stuff in the show notes, and I did not put a link to the schedule. There's a doc out there. Mm-hmm has all of these events it's, in the schedule yeah and it's all in the uh the, the there's a group me out there if you want to if you want to get in on any of this stuff just just do a quick search or or look up uh ritual misery or, or ethan kane or rm underscore del noche on uh, twitter and we can get you hooked up with with the group me and you can find the schedule and everything else from there so is all that stuff on the diamond club reddit uh it is actually it is yeah so just go to diamondclub.reddit.com would probably be the easiest yeah, uh, way to find all. It, it's sticky. It's the second post on, on the on the page, so you just go there and you click the group B, and and you can find out everything. Yeah, right and and also, also linked on diamondclub.reddit.com, um, and and you can just go directly to it. You can go to ritualmisery.com slash swag, and there's the, I'm here for the anal, uh, <laughs> t-shirts, <laughs> the the official. Is at, at this point, it's basically it's the official T-shirt of Austin Night Attack Live. Well. Um, so <laughs> it's, uh, these shirts are awesome. Mine's gonna be here tomorrow, I think. Is it uh, mine? Uh, mine should be here probably first part of next week. Oh man, I, I can't wait to get it. But if, if you guys, if you guys are going, especially if you if you want one of these shirts, you need to order it like right now to get yep, it on exactly, time. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, yeah, get get on that, man. Get get on that anal. Sure. Someone, someone just got on the show that is not getting what, it, what the acronym means. Like, hey, I'm here for the anal. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh man, yeah, it's gonna be that kind of party. So, uh... <laughs> I guess. Oh, but also uh, for all of our fans, if you if you have a ritual misery T-shirt, and we see you in Austin next weekend. You are getting a free drink, one from me and one from Amos, and uh, maybe more from Kate. Yeah, maybe more, depending on how many drinks you buy me. <laughs> uh, so the, basically, the the shirt is going to pay for itself. Uh, we would just we would be over the moon if we saw people out in the wild wearing our t shirt. There you go. I'm, uh, I'm 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 actually cutting you guys off a little bit here to show the shirt on the video. Um, so, there, so, so, so there's a, yeah. there it is right there. The awesome it's, a, it, it, it's a great design. And it's 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 simple, straightforward, but it's a, it, it's really cool. It's an attractor shirt. If you buy the premium shirt, which is the one that that I bought, it's a couple bucks more. But holy shit, is it comfortable? It, it's a it's a really well made shirt. There we go. So there it is right there. Austin Night Tech Live. That's on the front. And if I could, if I could hit the hit the description to where it actually unlocks it, and we'll show the the backside. But whatever. Yeah, that that's, that's, that's the problem with anal is you can never find the backside. <laughs> Man, sometimes you can find it, you just can't get in. Uh, you know, it's, you gotta... the, the struggle's real. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> Damn it. Um. No, but check it out. Ritualmisery.com slash swag. Uh, we've got some coffee cups, uh, a couple different shirt designs. Uh, there's there's a few things on there. Um, the anal shirts are at no markup <laughs> at all. None. Uh, so it's, it's, it's at cost. Uh, but everything else on the site is exactly $1 above. Uh, $1 markup. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, Amos and I, Ritual Misery, gets one dollar for each purchase of everything except for the a n a l shirts um yeah and, and here, here's the uh here's the other side of it for the 
I'm here for the anal. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's on the back and this is on the front. The so there you go. There there's there's the, there's a thing for the video. There you go. <clears throat> so fantastic. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. We we uh the 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 Austin Night Attack Live shirts, of course, it's not our logo. We I just I just you know, drew it up, made it look a little pretty with some other words and stuff like that. So no markup on that at all. Anything else that you buy on there is exactly one dollar markup. Um, so you get some cool swag, and some nice shirts. They're actually nice shirts, and yeah. uh, and we get a dollar to help keep this show going. So there's, that's how that's how. And like I said, if you wear it this uh, uh, next Saturday or next well next Friday, Saturday or Sunday, and we see you at any of these events or just out in the wild, you're gonna drink for free probably. So it's gonna pay for itself. Maybe yeah. even more so yeah because i think what after two maybe three drinks the shirt's paid for oh yeah so yeah in austin. in austin so um yeah so, so there you go. i am i dude i am i am looking so forward to next weekend we've been planning this for a really long time i can't wait to wake up to the sound of you punching the floor in the in the travel trailer because you get so drunk that you don't like gravity anymore <laughs> that seems to happen when i'm in your presence That's, that that actually happened last time we we were, we had an airbnb and he ended up uh getting getting really hammered and punching the floor and yelling at the floor because he didn't like the gravity uh so so that, that... may or may not be accurate <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's, it's because I, I yeah i time traveled past that so I don't really know. <laughs> it's 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 spot on. So um <laughs> But yeah, lo really looking forward to that. We're going to miss uh Miss Edgar there and uh, hopefully we'll meet uh, some other great people. We're not just going to be there for the party. We're actually going to hang out and, and check out some of the things and uh Absolutely. Know, go to the the, the Mashable party and, and this th you know that. But uh it's a great time and we hope to see everybody down there. Yeah, man. It's oh, it's going to be so much fun. I wish you guys could join us. Adolfo and, and Edgar, but hopefully next year uh, we'll be able to hook that up. And I am, I man, this year's South by is just next week, and I'm already looking forward to next year. So, <laughs> man, it's su such a good time. Um, and Edgar and Adolfo, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I've been trying for a year to get Edgar to come on. And uh, <laughs> so I think the consolation prize for making me wait was that Adolfo got to come on the show. Also, so that's awesome. Um, uh, Lienzo.com for all of your stuff. We will include links to your stuff in the show notes. Lienzo.mx, actually. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes. Lienzo.mx. You yeah. fucking American. Well, it's all going to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I really appreciate you guys come on, coming on. And I'm really excited about Mulaka. And uh, what was the what's the name of the, the game that's going to be on Steam? It's Hunter's Legacy, and it's uh, it's it should be re it should be released uh, later this um, summer, summer twenty sixteen. Awesome. So right. so pay attention to Steam and look for Hunter's Legacy. Right. Awesome. Cool. All right, man. Uh, so Kent, where can people find you, man? Twitter is the best place. I'm always saying something, even if I'm just saying something about a retweet. Um, R M underscore Del Noche. Uh, yeah. Like I said last week, man. I, it's like every week I reinvent myself myself on there. Um, so you check it out. You reinvent your sex, your sex on there. Um, that's, that's what I heard. Like, you know, <laughs> you, well, you, um, my sex or myself, um, I, I understand this is your first venture. From week, to, yeah, from week to week. It's, it, you know, <laughs> you never know. You never know. So just add me on Twitter and find out what's going on there at RM underscore. Are you, are you going to be, uh, are you going to be reviewing any beers next week while we're down there in Austin? Uh, in all likelihood. Yeah. And all like it, and where you would find those reviews is at ratebeer.com. Just look up username Del Noche, and you'll see my nearly 500 beers. Maybe, maybe that'll be what I do at South by is hit my 500 review. There you go. Just, there you go. You do hey, hey, you know, you got to have goals in life, you got to, you got to stick to your goals. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, man. Where, you, can, where are you at? You anyway? can find me at, at Ethan Kane on Twitter. That's pretty much the primary place to find me. Uh, of course, you can find the, the show, which is for me and Kent, uh, at Ritual Misery. There's also uh, other tidbits on there. Uh, submit ideas to our subreddit. It's the like the most unused subreddit on Reddit. So throw some ideas in there if you got some stuff you want us to talk about or you just want to argue with us. Uh, RitualMisery.reddit.com. 
Cool. You, you can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Um, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at ritualmisery.com. And uh, thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music royalty-free, which is awesome. Uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, for Adolfo, for Edgar, for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Hey guys. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on the show. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>